We've been to four organizations in four different states, over 11,000 miles of travel, and now those organizations are here. I'm Diane from Florida, president of Wild Horse Rescue Center. Hoping to bring home a check so that we can help even more horses in need. Your job is to run seven Sinchil, two pony halters, five butteless pace. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's not right. I can't do this. This is too hard for me. So who are you going to choose? No brainer, Tawny. Wow. How are we even going to choose who gets the $15,000? They've had quite the journey getting here. We went to them. We chose them to be one of the mentored organizations. We'd like to take you back and show you a little bit of that journey. We're here in beautiful sunny Florida on a beach. Florida is known for a whole lot of amazing wildlife, birds, alligators, all kinds of wildlife, but what it's also not known for is having wild horses. There's actually a wild horse rescue center here in Florida and they applied to be a full circle of life horse shelter. And we're about to go meet them. We're not gonna be on the beach long. We're heading inland where the weather can change in a moment's notice, but we're ready for whatever it throws at us. so beautiful. This is incredibly beautiful. It's not quite the beach, but it sure is pretty. I'm really excited to just see what kind of facility they have. They're supposed to have 40 acres, so it should be plenty big to run an open admission shelter. Yeah, no, and like, you know, the whole full circle of life, open admission shelter, I think it would be really good for Florida to have that. Um, you know, a lot of rescues, you call them and they're full. And there's a lot of horse issues in Florida. Yeah, and we have the illegal horse slaughter that happens a lot down here. Hopefully, hopefully she can be a full circle of life horse shelter and she can help put a stop to all the craziness down here and give every horse owner a solution. Wow, look, we're here. Yes, we are. All righty, let's, uh, let's check it out. Oh, it's so beautiful. Wow. Hello, Diane. Hello. Hello. Hey, welcome, guys. Welcome to Wild Horse Rescue Center. Wild Horse Rescue Center. That's this is right. so well, beautiful. We have some horses not too wild, but we have some wild. Aww. Well, my name is Diane Delano, and I am founder of Wild Horse Rescue Center. We're located in Webster, Florida. So where you just walked through is our senior horses or some new intakes like that horse right there. We have some horses that are 34. We have a lot of seniors and they're Mustangs and we have some El Paso and a Tennessee Walker, but I have loved horses my entire life. Ever since a child, we had horses. When I was little, I grew up with horses and I seen my first Mustang, 1975 fell in love with that idea of taking a wild horse and gentling it up and keeping it forever. So when I was about 29, I had that opportunity and I got my first Mustang and I was like, wow, this is incredible. And I started adopting and I started mentoring. I started finding 
a lot of Mustangs that had a lot of human problems. I found that it was people that created the problems in these horses. These are some of the horses that are either wild or just came in. If they're wild or having uh, training difficulties, mm -hmm. they're gonna be in here. Okay. And we can't let them out there in the field because the fencing is yeah. not secure for wild. I became part of the Wild Horse Mentors from 2000 to 2005, traveling around, meeting incredible people all over the United States with a passion and a love for the wild horses. In 2007, I created Wild Horse Rescue Center, which was a center for wild horses to come to, to help rehabilitate them and hopefully have them adopted out to their new homes. My name is George Poza. Uh, I've been here now for about, going on three years. When I first come out here, um, I do a little bit of relaxing in a way when I first come out here. I'm out here usually between 6 and 6.30 in the morning before anybody else is out here. And um, get myself ready, then I'll sit down and I get to enjoy the sunrise. Start getting together the rest of the people that live here, start rousing up and start coming out. And then it's just basically what needs to be done. If I have a project going on, then I'll be then I'm done with the horses for now, and then I go with, uh, you know, do a project or whatever, and then, uh, and then come back and just hang out with the project horse. Well, everything is directed by Diane. However, I already know what it is that I need to get done. So I just go out and get it done. You know, I retired from the military uh, after 23 years in the military. So, you know, seeing certain things that you don't want anybody else to have to see and stuff like that. So this is a, it's been a good for me as far as relaxation and, and you know, just kind of allowing myself just to focus and do different things. So it's helped my, my overall attitude and stuff like this. I guess the favorite part really is just being able to be around the, the horses, uh, not just walking up to a horse you know, from outside the stall or something and petting him a little bit. I'm actually being around in, in the pens or out in the uh, pastures with them and things like that. I do enjoy being here. You know, I look forward to coming out to the ranch. So you can tell me a little bit about your, your shoot setup here, your squeeze kind of. It is a very primitive style, <laughs> okay? So we use but it's these functional. panels, yeah, we yeah. use those panels that mm -hmm. you see leaning there, okay. and we make an alleyway. Mm -hmm. So we run the horse in, and he goes in, and we have catch gate slam, okay. so that catches him. This is not the ideal, because it's too long. I just yeah, use these nice I can, I can tell panels, that, yeah. and it's too far. Mm -hmm. But I can work it, but it's not ideal. Yeah. It works as far as safety, because number one, I gotta keep my vet and farrier oh, yeah. safe. And you can do vaccines, and you can do stuff in here. You can't lay them down in here. Yeah. Our perimeter is six foot, and this is probably five five on the interior. And then our out is probably seven foot almost. So. This is for stuff that's wild. You can see a bent panel right oh, there. Yeah. You can see it's one of these. If yeah. a wild horse can get his throat latch over, mm -hmm. the rest of his body yeah. will follow. It will so go. Our goal is to get rid of all these brown ones and keep purchasing these bigger ones nice. right here. So then we have it all um, connected. You can go into the riding pen or you can go around the riding pen and go to the round pen. So it makes it easy for working yeah. with these guys. May the road rise to meet you when the sun kiss your face. May there always be a miracle waiting just to bless your day. Life won't always hand you roses. Don't let it get you down. Keep your eyes on what your goal is and your feet on solid ground. Take this with you. So this group um, is called our sanctuary. They're anywhere from six to 26 years old. So it's a variety of horses in here. I mean, this is Aquaman. Aww. He is a six-year-old tarpan under saddle. And he is a sweet boy. All of them are sweet, sweet horses. What is a tarpan? They are a prehistoric horse. They were some of the horses that were on the cave drawings, like the Paras oh, interesting. horse. I never can mm -hmm. say that right. They're, uh, if you look up tarpan, you're going to see them when dinosaurs were. Yeah, he's got cool DNA. 
Yes, he does. And like I said, these horses do get to go out there. We can't leave them out there because they'll eat all the grass. Mm -hmm. And that lake really isn't a lake. It's actually my pasture <laughs> underwater. There is a small pond, but you can see the grass coming through. So we've got to let that grass come in really good so that they can enjoy it. And it's a blast watching them. Oh, yeah, they I They run can like the wind. And, and they've got these big, beautiful trees, a, sh a shade. It's, they're gorgeous. These trees are magnificent. Uh -huh. That was one thing that was so beautiful about this property is we're full of these beautiful live oaks. Now you said you have like a museum? We here? have a history center, a history education center. center. Okay. Um, this building had a $5,000 donation given to us to help nice. with it. So it's wonderful that we have organizations that are trying to help us build this. this wow, is a, I'm excited to see this. This is my lifetime collection of wild horse stuff. Oh my wow, life. it's beautiful this in here. This is so Thanks. beautiful. You can go in here and you can read about Mustangs and about uh, things that have been going on for years since 94. Was your organization affected during COVID? Well, we lost all of our volunteers for the international. 160 people a year came through here. That's paying people, that's not free. So financially. it went completely zero. We were affected 100%. So financially it was a huge hit on it you. It was, mm -hmm. and these people here, when we put out a cry and into the newspapers, they all came rushing wow. to us. Wow. So these are the people that carried you through during yes. COVID. Yes, these are the wow. people. Well, this is so beautiful. Uh, just amazing, the work you do. Well, thank you. My name is Rika Varis, and I'm an international volunteer. I come from Finland, and I basically here, what I do is I help out with the horses, the day-to-day -day chores. So feeding the horses, haying the horses, cleaning the stalls, getting them fresh water, taking the horses out in everything that needs to be done, like the daily basis. I was expecting it to be like different from Europe, so kind of like wanted to see the culture, the also like the history of handling horses. I mean, it's very different here and I think it's very cool. I'm very super interested in that. And of course, like the wild horses, that's something like so unique and super, super cool. And then I just applied online, told them a little bit about myself and my horse experience. And then I just, then they responded to me very quickly and got the applications. And it was just like a few days and I got the placement. So it was really, really nice. Then also, of course, seeing Diane and all the other like expert wor workers work the horses. I just learned so much from just watching them work. Of course, sometimes like because I'm this is completely new for me, I might need very like clear instructions for something, and sometimes it might be like just go along and figure it out as on the go. But that that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's kind of like you learn to trust yourself and your judgment too, like, okay. This has been so like, I think eye-opening for me, like seeing different ways of handling horses, working with horses. I think I'm gonna take a lot of that with me when I go back to Finland. We have hor horses, like my family has horses, so I think I'm gonna be a better, like, horsewoman <laughs> after this and also like, this is a very different life from what I live in Europe, so yeah. Hey, Tani, I'd like you to look at this horse's ear. He's a Tennessee walker and you're from Tennessee. And he came in with this ear gunk and we've been doctoring it and we're gonna look at it again today. So maybe you can help me. Have you ever seen a Mustang with ears like that? No, okay, I've so had mites and He's stuff. a Tennessee walking horse. Most likely he's been a big lick horse. Wow. What they do is they put chemicals on their legs and make the skin very tender and then they'll put chains on them and they'll train yeah. them to do that big lick. So the groom comes along, the groom shaving the legs with those chemicals and noxious stuff. Okay. And then they'll they'll trim the ears uh -huh. and you get like a bacteria that starts growing. And I, we've rescued a horse like years ago, 
horrible case, just like this horse, his ears are still the same. We've never been able to, okay. to get it cured. Will we be um, able to tell on the foot It's possible. Uh, some horses, if they have, uh, you know, the scarring has, uh, basically if they can use them for shows, they can't mm -hmm. have any scars. Okay. So being that he has less hair through here, yes. probably means that they put chemicals here to burn the skin and the hair growth is not the same. Right. Um, and actually, yeah, right here you can feel there is a scar right there. Uh, once yes, they're scarred, wow. they can't be shown Okay. because they won't go through the inspection. So most likely the chemical burns got too much and they dumped him. Um, and they actually will train them because all Tennessee walking horses go through an inspection. Mm -hmm. They'll train them not to move when you're pushing on here. And if they move, they'll actually beat them and, and teach them that it's better to hold still with that wow. amount of pain than That's, to move. It's horrific what they go horrible. through. But my guess is he was a, a big like Tennessee walking horse. He got the scar. Um, I mean, with the ears and that scar, that would be his story. Okay. I would say from my experience. Well, what a shame because he's a really nice horse. And he is uh, a lucky horse because he got that scar. He's no longer being abused in the right. big lick racket. Well, we abuse. need to make some changes there. Yeah, there needs to be. We <laughs> yes, see sir. so many big lick horses. So he is a lucky horse not to be in that industry anymore. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. This is our trainer. I'd like you guys to meet. Hello. Shelby. Hi. Shelby. Nice to meet you. You as well. Your horse is beautiful. Thank you. Hi, buddy. This is Kevin. I'm Kelby Farnsworth, and I'm Wild Horse Rescue Center's full-time trainer. So what happened to your eye? I fight. So. Oh, so you fight. What do you fight? Uh, Muay Thai. Okay. So I used to actually like fight. Now I'm just wow. going to the gym. So a horse but... didn't do that. No. It was a human. No, was On a human. purpose, I guess. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so a horse trainer and a fighter. That's a unique combination. Yes. <laughs> so what, what do you do here at the facility? Um, we work with the horses and try and get them riding. They're a lot more adoptable once they're riding. Absolutely. And it's a lot easier for other people to deal with them yeah, when they're not well. wild and <laughs> it gives them a safety net too. education Absolutely. gives them a safety net and they're a lot happier when they have a job just like oh, yeah. you know dogs it's hard when they yeah are stuck in a different environment than they're used to i'm also a vet tech i have my nursing license i have many things but i would much rather work with animals um, i feel like it helps me as much as it helps them and i don't get paid much for it but i accept that it's what i love to do and it's what the animals need, you know, and Diane can't afford to send these horses out to professional trainers. Um, it's expensive. And then a lot of the times you just get a forest trained horse that you still have more work to put in. You can't just adopt them out that way. So it is a sacrifice and I'm, I spend a lot of hours, definitely hour to pay ratio. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but the animals are so worth it. So what does a day look like here when you come here and how often are you here helping the horses? So I live on site. I'm at the back of the property. We each have our own chores. So we do our chores and then we have plenty of horses to ride. So there's all the adoptable ones. We try and keep them in shape. And when people can come, they can see how they ride and then see if they'll work for them. But the goal for them is to get them trained so that they can also get a home. Yeah, so. they can go on and live a, a very good life and as a good citizen, a good yeah. horse citizen with knowledge, so. Yes, and a lot of people get them wild and don't realize how hard it is to touch them initially. And yeah. so those horses stay wild and then later in life, they're very hard to care for. We find them when they end up at auctions and yes. it's really, really sad. Right. Because if somebody would have spent the time to train them, and if they can't train them themselves, then somebody like you who can. Right, and there's get, a lot of tip trainers yeah. that get them like leading and picking up their feet because they need their feet done. Yeah. As you guys will learn with our sanctuary, it's hard yeah. when you can't just pick up their feet and trim them. No, oh, absolutely. And it does affect their health and everything down the road. Well, it was really nice to meet you, Kelby. We'll let you get back to training. You as well. Right now, a donkey's uh, being brought into the rescue that we're looking at mentoring. And this transporter took quite a bit of their day to pick up this animal. And it's really nice there's people in the community that are willing to take their day to go rescue animals. Um, we're gonna have you just pull up a little bit and then we can offload right over there if that's okay. Perfect. All right, thank you. Oh, I'm so excited to see her. 
I can't see, I can see a little donkey. I'm not really sure of the age and stuff. I'll get all that information. Well, she is so cute. So this is a perfect example of trying to break the horses and donkeys going to auctions. Yes. And this little donkey could have easily gotten into the wrong hands and somebody would have seen that they could just take it to an auction and make some money. Once they end up at auction, it's the beginning of the slaughter pipeline. It's very hard for them to get out. Yes. Uh, a trader might pick them up, try to make money off of them. If they can't, they'll go back to auction and ultimately on a slaughter truck. And even these little guys will end up going to Mexico. I've seen them on slaughter trucks. Um, uh, it's just heart wrenching. It's just horrific to think that. And so this little donkey, we will get her vetted, we'll get her age, we'll get her taken care of, and um, then eventually she'll find a forever right. home. I don't think it's going to take long. No, she's really sweet. So I heard you say that, you know, she needs a name. And one thing that we have found very, very good is posting on social media, mm -hmm. here's this new arrival, she needs a name or he needs a name. Right. And the response and reactions you get from that right. really help bring your supporters to you. If they share it, they're like, well, who's this organization? I want to name a donkey sometime. Well, there you go. So they start following. Um, so if you're open to it, yep, they would be a perfect example. So in just incorporating your fan base to be a part of your organization, whether it's right. suggesting a name, uh, it really helps uh, people want to follow your organization and feel like they're interacting with you and, and well, a part of it. That's a perfect opportunity because Lord knows my girls know I come up with some crazy names. Well, so it's, it's after, we can have other people name After them. thousands of horses that come through an organization, you get named yeah. out like how many times. So it's really nice to rely on your supporters to suggest names yep. and it helps them be part of the organization. Absolutely. If you want, we can go ahead and make that post requesting a name for her and see how your fans respond. All righty, sounds good. Let's do that. Should be fun. Let's see what, see what we can get. So have you ever asked your fans on Facebook to name before? Not a total name, no. Okay. Sometimes we might be stumped on a name. We'll mm -hmm. say, we want this or that, yeah. you know, and have people. But this is a great idea to let um, some well, of our followers name yeah. her. And it really engages them. Mm -hmm. And then like, oh, I named that donkey or I named this horse. Right. Um, and all of us as rescuers were named out. So this is great. Okay. So if that looks good to you, go ahead and copy paste. Okay. And we'll just go onto your Facebook page and get it posted. A copy. No, you oh, just copied the. <laughs> listen here. So it's time to name that donkey. I know. And did you see all the cool names? We have over 10, uh, what, 200 posts, I think. 200 people. comments. Yep. I went through your Facebook page mm -hmm. and your other highest comment this year was 28 comments and then followed by an 11. Wow. And now you got 200 comments on just right. one post using the tools of, and you know, try this. Oh, we have a lot of names, but um, we only have a few with uh, several likes. Okay, so, so we have to go to the pickle. one. Uh, pickle seems to be the winning one there. <laughs> pickle with, seems um, got uh, eight yes. likes. Sweet Pea has four. She can go with the name Pickle yep. because she was in a pickle and that name may stay with her. You yeah, know, somebody might, might call change. her Sweet Pea or Mini Pearl or something. Yeah. We're not opposed to people changing names because yeah. we always change their name to give them a fresh start. Mm -hmm. So Pickle shall be her name. I'm just hanging out with little Pickles here. They chose Pickles from the uh, list of Facebook name suggestions. The vet's here to, to do some stuff to her and she's uh, gonna have a lot of interaction going on here real soon. Alrighty, Dr. Malone, let's come on in. Hey, Jason. Pickles is waiting for you. I'm gonna let you hook that on to her. Don't look too bad. No hooks in there, no, yeah? She's a tough little thing. They don't like their little mouse touch. You're all right, you're all right. I'm so bad with pony teeth, mini right, teeth, little teeth, big horses, I, I'm pretty good, but not the little ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's around five. So oh, good, Pickle. That's fantastic. You're only five years old. Wow. Yeah. 
Don't like her feet. She don't like her feet picked up. Maybe she don't like her feet picked up, huh? Yeah, we can back up a little bit if you want to. At our organization, we have a padded squeeze chute that makes cases like this a way better for the animal and the people. And sometimes the littler the animal, the harder they uh, resist. Yes. Yeah, well, I'm, I would prefer to be on the oh, panel. You want to be then she can't push me around. Okay. <laughs> We're all pulled up. <laughs> Relax there, little girl. You're right. Oh, she knows what you're yep. doing. She knows. <laughs> she knows. She knows. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> So good. Well, that shows right there that uh, possibly Chad will be able to do that. Yep, without anybody else, without a lot of people being on her, um, made her uh, want to fight even more so. My name is Marilyn Elliott and I'm a volunteer at the Wild Horse Rescue. Uh, I come clean stalls during the day, groom horses, uh, help feed. Occasionally I help uh, train, do the round pen, uh, so it's fun. My typical day at, at Wild Horse Rescue, I get here about 8 o'clock in the morning. I get out here early enough in the morning sometimes that the, the sun comes up over the water and the horses, especially when the sanctuary horses are out. Uh, I usually start on the uh, paddock horses. Uh, of course, I have to go through every morning and say hello and greet the buddies, grab a wheelbarrow and a pitchfork and start mucking stalls. We get the horses out in the afternoon. I groom, turn them out to graze. I started coming out here. Uh, what it gave me was just incredible because I could come out and not talk to people, but spend time with the horses. So it was as much therapy for me as it was anything else. You know, the physical activity, uh, the one place that I could come out and, and not have to think about anything else except the horses. So it was a relief for me, an outlet. She will not say no to an animal. And so even if we bring one in and, and relocate it, we move pins around. So space is a big issue. She's amazing with the animals. I've been around horses probably my whole life and I've learned a lot even at my age coming in here because of the way she deals with the animals. She's patient to a fault. One of the unique things about uh, Wild Horse Rescue Center is uh, the international program because we get to meet a lot. I've gotten to meet a lot of people from different countries and they come over and the, you know, the ho love ho horse lovers are the same countrywide or statewide international. Now we do have some difficult horses coming up. We have to lay down to do their hooves, right? Yes, we do. We have uh, two of them that'll be laid down. Uh -huh. um, so we have to build a squeeze in there, to show you okay. guys how we do that. Okay. And it's a temporary squeeze and it mm -hmm. opens up so the horse can lay down after sedation. Okay, well, let's go do that. Yeah. Okay, great. You have your big squeeze chute that you use for vaccinations and things like that. Why won't that work for what you're going to be doing? Well, today we're gonna to actually lay horses down. So we have to have a squeeze that we can open up after the horse gets his sedation. He's gonna get two sedations, one to relax him, and then one that just takes a few minutes that they'll lay down. Okay. So this way, all we have to do is just open up the panels. Dr. Malone will help him lay down nicely, and then we'll be able to do his feet. Well, I'll be interested to watch the process. Have you ever been hurt with this type of squeeze or that one over there? Um, uh, I was just knocked to the ground three days ago running a horse through the, an alleyway right here, mm -hmm. going into that squeeze, and he didn't want to go in it. Once they've gone in at a time yeah, or two, they, they, know. they know. So he didn't want to go in. So as I ran him down this alleyway, I needed to shut my last panel and he blew through and I mean mm. he knocked me like 10 feet my arm mm. was sore and I'm lucky that I'm wow. not really hurt but I'm bruised it seems like um the horse danger isn't too bad I mean j they could jump over but they right. are big animals mm -hmm. it's us little humans trying to help them and they're like yeah. I want to get out of here and they're panicked and, and they're scared and that's another yeah. thing they're not rationally thinking just like the horse that hit the panel he had already, my mistake, blew through twice because I had too wide of a gap. Yeah. So I narrowed the gap 
in a convenience for me to be able to hurry up and get it. And I went to hurry and he still saw a window of opportunity. sent you flying. Yep. Oh. So what we had to do on that is we had to completely change it. I sent him a different direction and sent yeah. him differently. So wow. once they know that they can break through mm -hmm. something, he's going to do it again. Yeah. So, all right. Well, so I'm going to set this yeah, up. Yeah, we'll watch and see how you do it. And, okay. um, and you really need a squeeze, don't you? I do. Mm -hmm. I need a squeeze. Yeah. dangerous it is putting horses in makeshift chutes. Oh, absolutely. And here she is in her 60s, and she can get really hurt. She can get hurt. Her volunteers who may or may not have training on how to do this safely could get hurt. They could get really uh, injured. Plus, I mean, the hassle of setting a ski shoot up uh, every time you have to trim a horse's feet that's mm -hmm. wild. They, they really need a They shoot need here. a hydraulic ski shoot. For safety for them and yeah, everything. It's a big need here. It's a lot of work setting up all those panels, it but sure it looks is. like it's done now. Yep, it sure is. Hey, and look, here oh. comes my farrier right now. Perfect awesome. timing. Hey, how are you guys today? Good. Yep. Hey, Chad, and, and uh, as you see, Kelby's in okay. here as yeah, well. Kelby, you're, uh, yeah, Kelby, yeah, so. Yeah. She's ready to help out too. She's gonna help me today. Good, yeah. awesome. It helps having a team. Oh because yeah. We're only got like seven minutes per shot. All right, well, we're going to kind of just step back and let you and your team work because okay. we know these situations can be very stressful and there's a le level of danger. All righty, come on. Let's go, son. There we go. We are on a seven minute time on these drugs. So we've got two people in here. Kelby's getting them cleaned and ready. Chad is over here nipping the feet. Kelby will file on the feet so that he can move to another foot. And we really try to work this as a team. Let's get these feet done. When we have a few minutes after we're done, we'll go back and look at if we got to address something. Um, we really try not to over drug the horses. Uh, today's not a bad day, but we will not do this in July, August, September because it's just too hot here in Florida. When you pick the foot up, you, you know, you clean the foot out, you trim the frog back, you pull all the old dead sole out, the live sole, then you trim it back to where you see a nice healthy line, then you pull everything back to where it's all um, symmetrical in the foot. So the frog, he doesn't look like he has any no, thrush. No, it doesn't look like he has thrush, it just looks like he has a normal frog for a horse that stays outside. So it's quite the process, um, and this is your routine for wild horses. This isn't like it's getting gelded, so we're going to sedate him and put him under anesthesia right. to get this one medical procedure done. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's it's a struggle for him it to is. have to go through that. Absolutely, it's it's time consuming for everybody. I mean, I have my vet, my farrier mm -hmm. here, my staff here. Everybody's just waiting. Uh, we have to go from one horse to the next. They have to come out of the sedation. So I've been using this method for a long time. And um, we have a lot of horses that need done. It's really been an all day experience here with these horses on farrier day. You know, the vet's been here, uh, the farrier, you know, laying the horses down. It all takes a lot of time. It's not an ideal situation for these horses, but they have to have their hooves trimmed. Uh, having a proper squeeze chute would really, really help out this organization. Um, it would be a lot better on the horses and be a lot safer for the people. My first name is David and my last name is Malone. David R. Malone Jr. I'm a veterinarian, local, uh, mobile, uh, equine vet. So someone, somebody recommended me. She called me one night and from there we got together and we've been doing it ever since for the last two years. Today we uh, sedated uh, there was two horses. Uh, some of them kick, 
and they, they can hurt you if they kick you. So it's stressful on the horse the more you do with them, the more, more people around them. So the shoot would be a real good thing. It takes out a little stress, a lot of time, and le less manpower. Um, so we knocked them down, we did the feet, trim them, and then we resedate every seven minutes. So we keep track of the time. Every seven minutes, we redose them with xylazine, ketamine. Uh, the longer you keep them down, the worse things can become for the animal. So today went well. Today was one of our better days. My name is Franz Ronschereck and I'm from Germany. I am also an international volunteer here. Yeah, we usually start at nine in the morning, like with the morning chores. And um, after them, we just do whatever is there to do. We washed some dogs and even got to ride the horses and go on trail rides. And then around five, or now that it's light longer, we start at six or something with the evening chores. So get the horses and feed them. And then the day is over. Uh, I always want to go abroad and um, I just started studying in Germany and I had like uh, off like the semester and I, I wanted to go somewhere else and I just Googled it <laughs> as well. And um, I wanted to do something with horses, of course, and I found a lot of places where it's just about riding, but I found the center then and it's more about like groundwork and rescuing horses. And that's what was like the reason for me to come here because like I can ride at home as well and I wanted to learn more about like handling horses and especially like with wild horses that's pretty interesting because we don't have that in Germany so that's um, why I choose this center. I really like um, that we get to like see the wild horses and actually like not just from a distance we actually got to groom some of them and like the ones that can be groomed. <laughs> I think being here for four weeks is also like a good amount of time because you get to see everything and it's not like a too long stay but I would come back for longer <laughs> um, but I think it has affected me in working with horses a lot because you just learn a lot by just watching the horses together and also like the people working with the horses and I think we do a lot of things kind of different maybe yeah like how we work with them and how we handle the horses so I think that will affect, of course, like how I work with my horse at home and also the riding stuff. Um, I really like how Diane is like um, with people as well as with horses. If an animal needs help, she takes them and no matter what, like also if she m maybe doesn't really have the time or space, she makes time and space for that animal so that it can be taken care of and can have a good life because she doesn't leave an animal behind just because there's maybe not a pen or something free. So she's just makes a new one. Um, so that's what I got like to see here, that they really try to rescue everyone that can be rescued. And um, so I think they will be like, really make something out of it that if they had like, as I said, more resources or the money. I love it here and I'm not really looking forward to go back. Like I would stay longer. And as I said, I would even come back. We're going to go get a wild horse. Now this horse, a man has had for a few months. He can't get any hands on it. It's really wound up wild. So he has it in six foot enclosure and he has panels. So we're not going to bring panels with us, but I'll bring my big long gooseneck trailer. We will back the trailer up to where the panels are and then we're going to send that horse in. We got him uh, and another Diamond HMA in January. Um, okay. And, uh, you know, this one's just been a lot tougher than the other. Uh, I've in there every day trying to work him and, and trying to touch him. And uh, I've got a 10 foot pole back here that uh, has worked a little bit. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the second day, it's like uh, 50 first states, that movie where he forgets everything after that first day and uh, I'm starting over. So. My name's Rob and I'm the owner of the property here along with my wife Debbie. But we thought after learning about the plight of the American Mustang, we decided let's offer our facilities to try to rescue some of them. So uh, essentially we, we adopted two.
So it's neat watching them set up their, um, their pen before the trailer. And that way when the horse goes in, they can actually squeeze it down and the horse isn't in a safe zone. Like his pen is a safe zone, so he doesn't want to leave his pen. They get him out of his pen and into an area where the trailer can look more inviting. I definitely know Mustangs and um, watching them, you can, you can learn a lot of what they're comfortable and what they're not comfortable with. So it'll be neat to see them load. Anywhere that has gifts is a place where he's gonna, that they can feel yeah. that they can go. He's just hiding in the barn. He's like, I don't know what they want. I'm. You saw how he was wanting to turn and face me and I'd put the flag on him. And then when he turned towards the trailer, I stopped. Yeah. Now you also noticed I shut that gate pretty mm -hmm. quick too. Yeah. The minute he got up in there and I could get to that gate without running too fast, you got to hurry up and get there yeah. without making a lot of commotion and get it over. So by using these flags, and a lot of people misuse these flags. They do. I they, see a lot they of do. problems with the flags. Mm -hmm. And the flags are easy if you just think about it. If you don't want the horse to, I don't want him looking at me. So I put the flag on yep. him. He turns away, I just wait. I think it went great today. Okay, it started out really raining. It actually took us longer for setup of tying the panels to the trailer, tying them to the structure, moving the panels where we wanted them, making sure it was all right, getting the people where we needed them so nobody was too close to the pen while he's trying to load in. So I think it went really well. I've been doing this a long time and our priority when we go to get these horses is to make the atmosphere and also make sure everything is secure to get them. So the Full Circle of Life is a really important mission for our organization because we go to so many different auctions and we see so many horses in just horrific situations. I'm so thrilled that you're part of this program and the Full Circle of Life. Um, I'm really excited to see how it really works here in Florida. I think it's going to work great in Florida. Florida is like the second, I think they call it the second Kentucky because of Ocala. There are a lot of horses here. A lot of people are trying to get rid of their horses. One of my goals is a full circle of life horse shelter within a day's drive of every horse in America. See, that would be great. Wouldn't that Absolutely. be awesome? Absolutely. So what are some of the main geographic areas you could serve here? We could easily do Florida, Georgia, and Alabama. And see, we're already starting to have some overlap because we can drive down to Alabama, no problem. We're about mm -hmm. two to three hours just north of Alabama. And see, that'd be wonderful. If people knew that they could take their horses somewhere, you would get a lot of horses that people don't know what to do with. And a lot of rescues think, oh, I, I don't want to ask for money for this animal, but as a nonprofit organization, we get constantly asked to help these animals. Right. We have to be the voice for those animals saying, okay, this is the need, mm -hmm. um, because they can't. Mm -hmm. And if we yeah. just silently take in all these animals, the organization has to have money to operate on. Um, one of the fears that a lot of rescues uh, think when they're like, well, sh you know, becoming a full circle life horse shelter, I'm gonna get bombarded with animals. Mm -hmm. So we'll be going over all of that in depth okay. at boot camp. Right. Uh, Fantastic. And it's, it's going to be a fun journey. Well, I look forward to it. I, I love, like I said, what you guys are doing. I can't wait to see how you're running it and how you're uh, producing out, saving so many horses. It's you.